Good evening and welcome again to the Monastery of All Saints of North America. And this evening we'll have uh, the, the last word uh, that I'm going to say about tradition and afterwards we'll move on to the difference between the uh, Evangelical Protestant and the Orthodox Christian view about Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden and the nature of the fall. When the Holy Scripture tells us that people, teachings, things will be known by their fruit. And the Apostle tells us that there's one faith, one baptism, one Lord Jesus Christ, also then one body of Christ. So let us look at the difference between what the sacred tradition, including the scripture, has given us and what the fantasy of sola scriptura has produced. We notice that in the Orthodox world, we have not only Canadians and Americans, Russians, Ukrainians, Greeks, Arabs, Romanians, all of whom speak a different language and have differences in culture. There's no earthly head of the Orthodox Church. We only have uh, the Patriarch of Constantinople who acts as chairman when there's a general church meeting. But he has no universal authority. How is it then that with all these differences in language and culture and passions and emotions and all the other things that inhabit the skull of mankind, the Orthodox Christian Church has preserved for 2,000 years one faith, a common faith with common teachings. And how is it that the Orthodox Church has maintained the unity of spirit, the unity of faith, the unity of the common communion among all, despite all of the usual strife and misunderstandings and discord that mankind creates himself. Because throughout the Orthodox Church, every jurisdiction has held fast to the sacred tradition. It is the sacred tradition itself, which especially the divine liturgy and the iconography, that by the grace of the Holy Spirit has made it possible for us to maintain this one faith and this unity. It certainly has nothing to do with we mortals. We certainly had our discord and our disharmony amongst ourselves. But the faith itself has never been wounded or injured by this, and there is no division in the church about faith, belief, the understanding of Jesus Christ, of God, of salvation, and all these other things. But what has Sola Scriptura given to the Protestant world? There are more than 1,000 Protestant denominations today. Even amongst the Baptists, the ones who are pro producing this manifesto for witnessing to us benighted Orthodox Christians. Are you a Southern Baptist? Are you an American Baptist? Are you a general association of regular Baptist Baptists? Are you a two seed in the spirit fire baptized Baptist? Are you an Anabaptist Baptist? Are you a fundamentalist Baptist or a liberal Baptist? So, or perhaps a Presbyterian uh, or Lutheran. But if you're a Lutheran, are you a liturgical Lutheran, a high Lutheran, a low Lutheran, a Missouri, a Missouri Synod Lutheran or an American Lutheran? If you're uh, of the sort of so-called charismatic wing, are you Assembly of God? Or which of the jurisdictions of the Assembly of God? Are you one kind of Pentecostalist or another kind of Pentecostalist? Do you believe in speaking tongues Pentecostalist or not speaking tongues Pentecostalist? Are you a holy roller or one of any number of sub-denominations and you see sola scriptura oh we use only the scripture why you keep dividing and subdividing and splitting apart 
Is that why you cannot agree on what is necessary for salvation? Is baptism necessary? Is it not necessary? Is it a symbol? Is it a rebirth into the church? Is it following the words of Christ who insisted that we be born again of water and the Spirit? Uh, so, uh, is the laying on of hands, is there the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, is there not the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Original sin, is there no original sin? All of these, are you once saved, always saved, or can you lose your salvation? Um, we could go on and on and on. Sola Scriptura has produced nothing but splits, schisms, divisions, a multitude of different faiths, not one faith, not one baptism, not one Lord Jesus Christ, but a dozen different views and understandings of Jesus Christ. Are you an adoptionist, an incarnationist? One faith, one baptism, one Lord Jesus Christ. You find that where the sacred tradition has been preserved. You do not find it where people proclaim sola scriptura, scripture only. Because sola scriptura, scripture only, is first of all a fiction, as we've already demonstrated, and secondly, it makes each individual Protestant an infallible pope of his own. I believe that you can interpret scripture as you see fit. Each person can interpret the scripture as he sees fit. Uh, these are all Protestant slogans. Now, you judge the tree by its fruit. The fruit of solar scriptura is a multitude of faiths, all in discord and disharmony. No agreement on exactly who Jesus Christ is, no agreement on what is necessary for salvation. No agreement on the on the nature of Adam and Eve and the fall and what we're do and how we're redeemed from the fall. The fruit of the sacred tradition is a unity and harmony of faith. One body, one Christ, one faith, one baptism. The Orthodox Church, with all of its linguistic and cultural differences spread throughout the world has unity and harmony of faith and proclaims one gospel and one Lord Jesus Christ to the world. Sola Scriptura Protestants can make no such claim because they have a multitude of Christs, a multitude of faiths, a multitude of doctrines of salvation. Sola Scriptura is a total failure when it comes to the preservation of the gospel and of the faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and of his message of salvation.